I might be about to make a bit of a mistake here, but I'm going to do this anyway. I'm moving on to the roof of the spotting top for HMS Hood, specifically the windows. Following the guidance from the HMS Hood Association, we know that the windows are a bit too small and not squared. What I will be trying to do is make these frames around the windows smaller, and I'm going to do that by cutting out this plastic and replacing it with 1mm by 0.25mm plastic stock. If I install the plastic stock on its edge, I'll have a much more narrow frame than as it was molded on this plastic part. Now, the reason why I think I might be making a mistake here is that I think it's going to be difficult to evenly space all this plastic stock, and that even if I do get it spaced correctly, it's going to be very difficult to keep all of these pieces standing vertically. And that could mean that when this part is viewed, the windows look all out of alignment, and that could be quite unattractive. In a recent video, I constructed wind baffles for the Ford Air Defense platform. In that video, there were 1mm by 0.5mm pieces of stock that I used to create struts. This is going to be a similar task to that, except the difference is, is that instead of finishing that with a faceplate that covers those support braces, these frames will be left visible. That means I am going to have to be a lot more careful when constructing these window frames. That being said, these parts will be larger, and I hope that translates to being a bit more easy to work with. The first thing that I need to do is mark the location of these existing frames. And I'm going to do that using a blade and etch a line at the center point of each of these frames. I don't want to use a pencil or a marker or anything like that because I'm concerned that while I'm working with this part, it might rub off. If there's literally a scratch into the surface, that shouldn't rub off. That will mean that after I've prepared this area by removing all of these plastic ribs, there'll still be marks on the surface that I can use to then correctly align and position the replacement frames. Once I have finished with the window frames, I'm then going to move on to altering the roof. There are two things that need to be done to the roof. Firstly, it is too flat. I'm going to try and curve it out a little bit, but there's not a lot of plastic for me to work with. So I'm just going to have to see what I can do over there. And the second thing that I need to do is to adjust overhang over the windows using some styrene stock. I'll use 0.25 by 0.5 millimeter styrene stock for that. Once I have completed the modifications, I'll spray the spotting top in Mr. Surfacer 500. Now to the modifications. First, I will mark the location of the existing frames. I'm doing this using a sharp hobby knife. I'm putting a light scratch into the surface of the plastic. When this component is glued together with the base of the spotting top, this section of plastic will be concealed. It will be the surface that the glue is applied to. So anything that I do here is going to be covered up. I am trying to keep these marks as close to the center of these frames as possible, although that is a little bit difficult. If I don't get it perfectly centered, it's not really going to matter. I will have an opportunity later on when I'm gluing down the new frames to adjust their position slightly. The markings are more of a guide so that I know roughly where to place the replacement frames. I'm also trying to make the scratch follow the same path as the frame so that when I install the replacement frame, I know what angle to place it at. Once all of the frames are marked, I then can cut out the existing frames. I use clippers to cut the frames at the top and side. That is sufficient to get most of the plastic of the frame out, but it is still very rough and requires more finishing. So I move on to a bar file to try and dig out the rest of the plastic and to smooth out the surface. I'm not trying to achieve a perfectly smooth surface inside this groove where the windows will be. That's because it's going to be painted black and that's going to conceal a lot of the defects anyway in this area. What I am being careful to do is make sure that I dig out the corner deep enough so that when I place the replacement frame in, it's able to touch this groove at its topmost corner and its sidemost corner. If the groove isn't deep enough, that means I won't be able to insert the frame in properly unless I cut the corner off. On the other hand, if I dig the corner in deeper than it needs to be, the corner of the frame at the back of the window won't touch, but that won't matter because it won't be visible anyway, because it'll be painted black and far inside the recessed area. The only side of the frame that I'm concerned about is the side that's going to be at the edge of the spotting top. 
the side that will be visible. After digging out the groove, I then move on to cutting the pieces of styrene stock that are going to form the replacement frames. Here I'm not too concerned about getting the size precisely correct. They just need to be slightly larger than what is required because once installed I can then sand them to fit. This stock is 1.5mm by 0.25mm and I'm cutting it into strips that are roughly 2mm long. Before using the chopper to cut out multiple copies of this size for the frame, I check it against the component to make sure that it fits within the groove everywhere and that it's not too shallow in certain locations. I'm happy with this size for the frame, so I then move on to cut out multiple copies. Although it is not strictly necessary to do this with a chopper, it does help. In this case, I'm mostly using the chopper to ensure that I make 90 degree cuts. In total, I need around 20 of these pieces. Once I have cut out all the pieces, I then move on to installation. The installation of these frames is very similar to the installation of the support struts for the wind baffles. I place extra thin plastic cement on the component in the place where I want to install the window frame, and then I place the window frame into the drop of extra thin cement. This instantly causes the frame to tack to the component, but it takes some time to dry, which gives me the opportunity to reposition the frame as necessary. I'm using extra thin plastic cement instead of extra thin super glue for the same reason as before. Extra thin plastic cement will not bond to my tweezers, which makes this process considerably easier. It will also evaporate off almost completely and leave very little residue on the surface. Although extra thin super glue is also extra thin, it does leave more residue, doesn't fully evaporate off, and if you apply multiple layers of it, you will build up a bit of a surface. In addition to that, extra thin super glue will bond to the tweezers and make things considerably more difficult. In short, you can be far more careless with extra thin plastic cement and still get a good result, whereas you have to be far more careful with extra thin super glue. With extra thin super glue, you have to be precise with how you place it, and there is very little opportunity for you to make a correction before it has set. The downside of extra thin plastic cement is that it is slower drying, which is also the upside of it, and that means this process does take a little bit longer. But if you consider how much more careful you'd have to be with extra thin super glue and probably the time required to make corrections from all the mistakes you would make, you probably find that in the end extra thin plastic cement is probably actually faster anyway. Regardless, this is the method that I chose. I think it works well. I did this in stages. I started with the starboard side of the spotting top and then let that dry and then moved on to the port side of the spotting top and completed all of the frames. Once all of the frames were installed on this half of the spotting top, I then needed to leave the component to dry for a good amount of time. In this case, I left it to dry overnight because the next step is to sand the frames to length. If the glue has not properly dried, sanding them will likely dislodge them and then you'll have to repeat the installation of at least that frame. Obviously, I want to avoid having to repeat work. The next day, after the glue has properly dried, I start the sanding process. I start with a bar file and gently take off a little bit of plastic on these window frames just to bring them to roughly the same height. Once they are all roughly the same height, but a little bit taller than the groove in the spotting top, I then place the component with its frames on a sheet of sandpaper and gently sand it until everything is level. It's important that I don't have an angle on this, otherwise I have to create gaps with putty when I install it onto the base of the spotting top. At this point, after a test fit, you can see that the frames in most locations are still sticking out of the side of the spotting top. That is intentional. I will now glue the roof of the spotting top to the base of the spotting top and let that glue properly set. Once again, I leave it to dry for a long time because I don't want to, especially at this stage, dislodge any of the window frames. After a few hours of drying, I then feel confident to sand the surface of the window frames. Once again, I start with a bar file to bring the frames to be flush with the bulkhead of the spotting top. Since I am only sanding the frames back to the surface of the spotting top, and since the frames themselves are very narrow, there's no need for me to go over this area with sandpaper. 
In this case, the frames are simply too small to be able to impart any scratches onto them. Well, at least any visible scratches. Since I had very carefully sanded the frames to be at the same height as the base of this spotting top, there's no need for me to fill any gaps between the bottom of the frame and the top of the bottom of the spotting top, if that makes sense. That is just to say that the top component of the spotting top and its window frames sits perfectly on the bottom section of the spotting top. Calling it a spotting top and having a top and bottom section of the spotting top makes this quite challenging to speak about. Hopefully I'm making sense. Now that I'm happy with the state of the window frames, I'll move on to dealing with this roof. I need to put a bit of a curve onto it, but there's not a lot of plastic here for me to work with, so I'm going to have to be careful. The first thing that I need to do is to put some ink down so that I can see how deeply I've filed into the roof. I think the easiest way to do that is to mark the perimeter with permanent marker and then file off to the edge of that line. That will then enable me to quite clearly see how deeply I've cut in and also keep the depth of that sanded area consistent around the full perimeter of the roof. After marking the area to be removed, I then file it back very carefully using a round file. I just want to have a nice consistent curve around the perimeter of this forward section of the spotting top. After filing back the perimeter, I then move on to a 400 grit sanding sponge and further smooth out and curve the roof. I think the result is quite good. It has left a very subtle curve onto the roof. I think this is as good as I'm going to get it. If I were to put any more curve onto this, I think I'd actually need to bulk up the roof a bit more. But I'm happy with this. I think this has worked quite well. So now I can move on to extending the overhang around the windows for the front section of the spotting top. To do this, I'm using 0.5 by 0.25 millimeter plastic stock. I start by using extra thin plastic cement to glue a section onto the windows at one corner and then manipulate it as I work my way around this area of the superstructure. I am aware that plastic stock does not handle being bent well when extra thin plastic cement is applied to it, but I had hoped that thin stock like this that is very bendable would have been able to hold up to the plastic cement a little bit better. Unfortunately, I was wrong and it did what it usually does and simply snaps. Fortunately, this is not such a big issue. It snapped in a pretty good area for it to snap in all reality and I was able to place it onto the model anyway and blend in that gap very easily. That however did then prompt me to move on to extra thin super glue to attach this piece of plastic. The reason why I had initially started using extra thin plastic cement was for the exact same reasons that I'd used extra thin plastic cement to install the window frames. It doesn't stick to your tools and it gives you time to reposition the component as needed. But in this case, it is simply unusable because it causes the plastic stock to break. Using extra thin super glue to install a single long piece of plastic like this is actually quite easy. So the downsides are quite minimal. I just have to be more careful with the initial positioning of this rim. And as you can see, the installation proceeds quite easily. I'm able to get it around this sharp curve at the front of the spotting top, and it glues down quite easily. Once I've worked the rim all the way back to the rear starboard corner, I cut it to length using clippers. After a few adjustments and another round of sanding, I then spray the spotting top with Mr. Surfacer 500. The Surfacer will fill micro scratches and reveal any substantial defects that I need to correct. And with that, the modifications to the spotting top are complete. I'm not going to paint the spotting top in this video, that's going to come later because I need to do some more work with how the spotting top interacts with the platform that it sits on. That's what I'll be doing in the next video, modifying the starfish platform that this spotting top sits on according to the suggestions from the HMS Hood Association. If you would like to support this channel or see how this ship looks when it is completed, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheers.